you stand and we'll join in singing together praises to our God. Hillsong's version of Hark the Herald Angels Sing. It's got a little different rhythm to it, but I'm sure you'll pick it up, and the chorus is a bit different, but uh, yeah, just pick it up as we go. Joyful all ye. 
The second candle of our Advent week, the Bethlehem candle, symbolizes the preparations we make to receive God himself and to worship the Christ. As John said, he must increase, I must decrease. It's all about him. Today, we light the rose-colored candles because the Christmas rose, often called the rose of Turin, was said to blossom in the desert. In so doing, it displays God's intention to bring beauty out of difficulty. We'll call it the angel's candle because their message was peace and the favor of God among men. This favor was brought by Jesus, and our calling is to joyfully sing this peace to others. Let me call us to worship with the words of the Isaiah 35, which they just referred to with the candle, the rose-colored candle. It says, Isaiah 35, the desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom like a crocus. It will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. The glory of Lebanon, that's famous for their forests, will be given to it. That's the desert. The splendor of Carmel, that's a mountain and of Sharon, that's a, a fertile valley. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. So, strengthen the feeble hands and steady the knees that give way. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong, don't fear, your God will come, and he will come with vengeance and div divine retribution, and he will save you. And then the eyes of the blind will be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped, 
and the lame will leap like a deer, and the mute tongue will shout for joy, and water will gush forth in the wilderness, and streams in a desert. The burning sands will become a pool, and thirsty grounds will become bubbling springs. In the haunts where jackals once lay, grass and reeds and papyrus will grow. This is the promise that comes through of Jesus Christ, our Savior, whom we worship today. Amen? Amen. Turn to somebody and greet them in the Lord. You may go ahead and find your seats once again, and uh, the deacons are going to help us collect our gifts to give away to people, and while they're doing that, we'll listen to some Christmas music from our quartet.
All right. Uh, I have a, a few quick announcements, uh, then I'll invite you to pray with me, and then we get on to the best part of our, our morning. So uh, real quick, we have, I have an update on our blood drive coming up, which is this Wednesday from 1 to 6 p.m. in the gymnasium. Uh, we had six people signed up out of a potential 40 to give blood a week ago, and uh, many of you did a great job coming through. We have 27 now, so that's a great increase. Uh, we have uh, four days left still and um, 13 spots to fill. So if you would consider giving, that would be great. Uh, you can sign up at redcrossblood.org or at our website. Um, secondly, thank you for many of you who grabbed uh, a Trinity personal care kit uh, slip on your, on your way out yesterday, or sorry, last week. And if you could bring those back uh, anytime, any Sunday, put it, place them under the tree. I did see a couple bags there already. So um, there are slips left if you still want to grab one and bless the, the Trinity men and their families. And uh, after the service today, we have our, uh, our budget meeting. So um, maybe you like numbers, maybe you don't, but we invite you to come to the budget meeting. It it's um, helps us to plan for our year ahead. So we invite you to that. That will start around the time Sunday school usually starts. And that'll be a short meeting, and then we'll move into our carry-in meal after the service. So thanks for, um, for participating in the life of the church, and we invite, I invite you to pray with me now. Lord God, we, we do thank you for, uh, for this church. Um, the building is terrific. You have blessed us with a, a, a tremendous building, but um, we know that that is not even close to the most important part. Um, and it's, it's because of, uh, of the people who you have placed here together and because of your faithfulness uh, to your people that this church exists. Uh, we thank you for many who have joined in uh, on, on the fight uh, against evil and uh, the fight to stand up for you. And we thank you that that fight is so worth it. Uh, we pray that you would just be with us today. We, we thank you for an exciting program that these kids uh, and youth and adults even are, are putting on for us today um, in honor of you and to shine your light so that uh, we can believe even more and for, for some even to believe for the first time. We, we pray that this would be a great example uh, of your love for us uh, in coming to this earth. Lord, I ask that you be with, be with those today and through the Christmas season who, who have lost members recently, uh, a loved one, and this is a hard time for them. Uh, I pray that you would come alongside them in a, a special way that only you can bring comfort. Um, you know, we, we try, and, and it's great to have loved ones with us helping, um, but Lord, we know that you, you can comfort on a whole other level. So we pray that you would do that. Um, and yeah, we just pray you'd bless our day, uh, bless this service, and, uh, and everything to follow. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Welcome to the Light Before Christmas. This is the most perfect Christmas program you will ever attend. The performers are ready to amaze you as they tell the Bethlehem story of Jesus come to life like you've never seen. I've not left one detail undone. After many nervous days, sleepless nights, and prayer, 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 it is time to show you the results of all the effort. Perfection, yes, that is the goal. Nothing less than absolute perfection. Lights, camera, action, enjoy. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Isaiah 60, verse 1. The light shines in the darkness. Stop! This is just a momentary glitch. I'm sure the lights will return quickly. Everyone, just stay where you are. Wait for it. Wait for it. Now. Okay, now. Is someone kidding me? Turn those lights back on right now. I should have known. It was just too good to be true. All I wanted was a perfect Christmas program. A perfect Christmas program from beginning to end. Is that too much to ask? 
Didn't I agree to be the director? Didn't I make all the copies, gather all the costumes, rehearse all the kids? Didn't I? What are we going to do? I uh, don't think the lights are going to come back on. No. Maybe, maybe we should cancel. No. It's such, it's such a Christmassy program. Well, what, we can't cancel it. What do you suggest? Let me think. Okay, I hear you. No matter what, we will have a Christmas program. I cannot promise perfection. We will just have to do the best we can in the dark. There were no electric lights when Jesus was born. All the light came from God's light shining in the darkness. I think we can pull this off. Flashlights ready, candles ready, let the show begin. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. That's from Isaiah 60. John 1 says, The light shines in the darkness, and darkness has not comprehended it. John 8 says, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't walk in darkness, because you will have light that leads to life. And then there's in Matthew where it says, You are the light of the world. A city on a hilltop cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp or put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, you let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven, from Matthew chapter 5. Well, we didn't know the lights would go out, but we're ready. It's a good thing we are shining our glow sticks. Let's glow for baby Jesus, everybody. One of the first things our little ones learn about Jesus and Christmas is Jesus loves us this Jesus loves me this I know. The whole reason we come to the manger every Christmas is because Jesus loves us. This makes me glow. Jesus doesn't need light because Jesus is the light. When we ask Jesus to be in our life, our hearts start to glow with his love. Look at how we're glowing right now. Maybe we should leave a little of our glow in the manger. Who cares if the lights went out? Jesus is the only light we need.
We are very brave to tell the Christmas story in the dark. I brought one big candle to light our way. Look at that candle. It looks so beautiful in this dark space. This candlelight shines in the darkness. We don't like the dark. The lights will come back on, but Jesus' light is the only light that shines forever in the darkness. In a little while, there will be Mary, Joseph, an innkeeper, shepherds, angels, and wise men surrounding the manger. Listen to their stories. Be amazed that God sent his only son to be the light in a very dark world. I have an idea. Should we put this baby Jesus in the manger before all those people come share with us? The Bethlehem story is short and sweet. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the truth. That is God's light in the world. Jesus came as a baby to be our savior. He is the light of the world. This is the light of my
create a dark stage? Who turned off the lights? I quit. I'm not going to stand in the dark. Oh, wait a minute. Turn off those lights. That's way too much light. Who are you anyway? That's a tall tale. I don't believe you. Turn off those silly lights. Me? I'm an innkeeper in Bethlehem. I had no idea on that dark night the Messiah was going to come to my inn in my little town. I had no idea. I was just busy, too busy to recognize what God wanted. We heard about you. You told Mary and Joseph that the inn was full. No room. I had to say it. I just didn't know. Your stable isn't much to look at. Kind of dirty and smelly. Fresh hay is a nice touch, though. I caught a lot of flack that night. They said, you couldn't provide a room for a pregnant woman. She had a divine child. No rooms? Not even a broom closet for the baby Jesus? I tell you, that hurts. I told him, check the record. Every inn in Bethlehem was full. The city was packed. We had reservations for months. It didn't matter. But even when Joseph said, this is an emergency and a baby's about to be born, I, I had no room. I didn't know. I said, I have a spare spot in the animal shed. You can sleep there. And he said, we'll take it. So in they go. I mean, what could I do? In they go. The baby is born, placed in a manger. Animals are staring. And I am convinced the cows were wondering, why is there a baby in my food box? Tell you what, you might think that's where the story ends, but you'd be wrong. That shed had a swinging door. People were coming and going left and right. The shepherds walked right in and pushed the animals around. Three guys showed up saying they were wise guys, but at least they brought the baby gifts. I gotta go. I can't stand around here yammering with you kids about the past. I got places to be. I tell you what, though, I had no idea. I still can't believe it all happened. It was all written down in, the sun. in Isaiah. I was just too busy, too busy to recognize. Rec wow. Wow, he was in a hurry. What he, what he say about Isaiah? I think he was talking about Isaiah 9, 6, which says, for a child is born to us, for a son will be given to us, and the government shall rest upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace.
need to let the audience go home and try again next year. This just isn't working. Hold, hold, hold on a minute. Uh, I think things are going rather well. I'd say it's even delightful, if you catch my drift. <laughs> Little ones were adorable. Uh, songs were beautiful. And we just started telling the story about the innkeeper. We can't quit now. So let's go a little longer. Um, you know, let the electricians work their magic. Magic? I doubt it. I'm a wreck. I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> I am not doing this again next year. This is awful. Come on, come on, come on. Lighten up, you know what I mean? Uh, you're, you're doing great. Uh, let's get this show moving again, shall we? Oh, fine. Whatever you say. Lights. Yeah, right. Camera. Action. Okay. <clears throat> There were shepherds taking care of the sheep one night near Bethlehem. Quiet and sleepy, all was calm. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord showed up, and there was so much light, unlike kind of here. And they were terrified, and the angel said something like, Listen up. Don't be afraid. I've got great news. Once everyone hears it, they're going to jump up and down with joy, or something like that. The angel told them that the Messiah had been born in Bethlehem, and they would find him wrapped in a simple cloth and sleeping in a manger. The shepherds just stood there and watched as bunches of angels came and sang to them, glory to God in the highest and peace to all the people of the earth because God loves them. Where are we? I have no idea. We're supposed to be near Bethlehem. Did you bring the map? You know we never use a map. Heavenly Father tunes in GPS, God's private sky map, and we just fly. I don't know why our angel light isn't working. Hey, look, a manger. I heard there, that must be it. I heard there be a manger. Let's go. Are we too late? Has the baby been born? I have no idea. Let's find out. Hey, look, I found it. This must be the stable where the baby is. Look, he's in the manger. Don't be afraid, we bring great news. Unto you is born a savior. We heard about it on the hillside. We got here as fast as we could. We want to see the baby. Excuse me, who are you? We are shepherds from the hillside. Angels, we saw thousands of them in the sky. They told us to get here as fast as we could. Did they tell you this is God's son, Jesus? He is a miracle and he is our savior. Don't breathe on the baby. Did you wash your hands? Thank you for such beautiful gifts. I will keep all of these close to my heart. Thank you for coming. Tell everyone you see, this news is too good to keep quiet.
the shepherds weren't the only visitors greeting Jesus. There were also wise men who traveled from the east to worship the little king. They followed the bright, bright star in the sky. These men who studied stars for years knew this was no ordinary star. They went to a great deal of trouble to leave home, to travel to a foreign country, to seek a king they did not know or understand. God touched their hearts in a very special way. Along the way, they had unique adventures. Danger, sneakiness, deception from an evil king stood in their path. But nothing could keep them from their final destination. That bright star shined down, and they were determined to discover the secret nearby. And they did. Hey, look, the star, it's behind the manger. We found the baby. We bring gifts to celebrate this wonderful child, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We bring gold, a gift fit for a king. We bring frankincense, a sweet perfume used in offering. We bring myrrh, it is a, a sweet oil to anoint. Thank you for such beautiful gifts. After the wise men had presented their gifts, they left by another route. Wow, that was beautiful. I think the lights might be overrated. There were no electrical lights when Jesus was born, and Jesus was born anyway. Hmm, you gotta think about it, I guess. Oh, 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 oh boy, oh boy, okay, I, have lost track of things a bit while trying to figure out the light situation. How are things going? How can all the lights go out at the same time? I promised a perfect program. Could you all see your children in the dark? Oh, I just feel so awful. Is it time to go home yet? Hey, 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 take, take a breath. Just calm down. Things are going great. I was just saying how beautiful this was. <sighs> Really? Yeah, really. I do think maybe we should wrap it up, though. You're probably right. <sighs> Let's finish the light before Christmas. Lights? Mm. Yeah, right. Lights! Light! We have light! How did that happen? Oh, oops, I think it was me. You?! Yeah, earlier when the show started, I, I tripped, and I think it was a cord. Uh, I hope it didn't cause too many problems, but I fixed it. Oh, no. No problem. Everything has been hunky-dory, you know. Just a Christmas program. Kids, costumes, major audience. No big deal. Oh, well, great. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I plugged the big one in, so I'm going to put the, the little one where it goes. Go ahead. Carry on. Hey, hey, I, wait, 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 wait. I can see it in your face. You're about to explode. Yeah, but don't, but don't really. I mean, think about it. Take a deep breath. You can forgive him. And isn't that what Christmas is about? Didn't Jesus come to forgive us of our sins? That's why God sent him. He forgave us. And that's amazing. And that gift lets us forgive other people. So, even if they screw up really bad, like the janitor, besides, it's been a pretty great program anyway. Really? <laughs> really. Although, I do think it's probably time to wrap it up.
You're absolutely right. I can forgive the janitor. It was just a mistake after all. And it is definitely time to wrap up this program. One last time. Lights. Camera. Action. <coughs> and there was light. We waited a long time for the light to come back on. Silly mistake, corrected with a simple electrical plug, but already forgiven, so that's good. This program just keeps getting better and better. You know, God knows the importance of light. At the very beginning in Genesis chapter 1, it says, God said, let there be light, and there was. And God saw the light, and it was very good. And there's another light that God called good. That light filled the countryside with the shepherds and the village of Bethlehem, and it peeked in every little crack in the humble stable where the humble couple was huddled before God with the newborn baby. That's an amazing adventure, really, filled with, well, God and angels and shepherds and, let's see, what wise men, wise men, and, of course, Mary and Joseph, and a manger for a bed instead of a cradle. Let's take a moment and reflect on the gift of this picture that we are thinking about. As we think about the light before Christmas. Yeah. Twas the light before Christmas when all through the stable the creatures were stirring, they were ready and able. Baby would soon rest there. The people were nestled all snug in their beds. The inn was jam packed, no place for more heads. Mary came looking worried, Joseph begging for rest. He just found the place for the long winter's nest. The baby arrived looking calm, looking sweet. The creatures looked on, God's plan was complete. When out on the street there arose such a clatter, Joseph sprang from his bed to see what was the matter. Away to the barn door he flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. On the, the light on the street was bright as the sun, it was shining above on every person. That light gave a luster to objects below, it looked like noonday, it looked like bright snow. When what to his wandering eyes did appear, but a street filled with shepherds grinning ear to ear. They said they were angels in light on their hillside. A baby was born near Bethlehem's village side. With one old shepherd so lively and quick, Joe knew in a moment God's word was slick. More rapid than eagles the visitors came, and Mary remembered each one by their name. The men from the east, so wise and so giving, came bearing great gifts. It would help with their living. The light that shone down must have twinkled so bright. The camels and frankincense made a great sight. As the shepherds and wise men and family turned, the baby cried, Hey, I've arrived. No concern. He had a sweet face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and cute. A right jolly sweet babe, and they laughed when they saw him. Not one was afraid. The light before Christmas shone in just the right place. The light of the babe brought God's joy to each face. The days were accomplished for God's only son. The light had arrived, the future begun. So let's all exclaim as we leave here tonight, happy Christmas to all, let's follow God's light.
And so we see before us a perfect picture of an imperfect night. Well, we think it's imperfect, but Jesus came into the world to fill the darkness. Born in a humble stable, surrounded by humble people, he was born with a purpose to light the darkness. And he would say later, I have come as light into the world that everyone who believes in me will not remain in darkness. That's in John 12. We get to tell this story, this Christmas story, every year because the light of God that he sent in the world never grows dim. And that same light of Jesus shines when we love him and in turn love others. John 1, 4 says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. It's a story that never gets old. The truth of it dispels darkness, actually, and brings hope over and over. And I happen to know on a first-hand account that this church is looking at light all through the month of December. We've looked at John 1 and Genesis 1, where Jesus came and was at creation and blended his voice with the Father's voice and the Spirit's voice to say, let there be light at the very beginning. He's the creator himself. And we know from Isaiah the prophet that Jesus' light is a light of forgiveness of God for all the darkness and sin that you and I have on the inside. That's why he came and died. And we're going to see in a couple of weeks that Jesus' light means to shine through us to every people group in the entire world. We'll see that in the book of Isaiah and at the end of the Bible, in the book of Revelation, where the Bible ends with a description of heaven and the new earth and God being present and, a, and the lack of a need for a light because, or from a sun or a star because God is right there with him. Truly, light goes all through the Bible from beginning to end. Jesus truly is the light of the world. <clears throat> so, why don't we stand and pray together. Go ahead, stand with me, and then we're going to sing a closing song in praise to Jesus Christ. Lord God, we just honor your, your beauty, your light that shines in darkness. God, we turn away from the darkness ourselves, and we ask you to forgive and cleanse us, that, that we could live in light, in joy, in hopefulness, and even forever because you made a way to come through the grave. And we just praise you in this season and we ask you, Lord, to bless those around us and empower us to love them like you loved us, selflessly, joyfully, and overlooking so much. And God, we praise you for that. May your reign come soon, Lord Jesus. And God's people said, Let's see. In the bleak midwinter, all creation groans for a world in darkness. Frozen like a stone, light is breaking in a stable for a throne, and he shall reign forevermore, forevermore, and he shall reign forevermore, forevermore. Unto us a child is born, the King of kings and Lord of lords, and he shall reign forevermore, forevermore. If I were a wise man, I would travel far If I were a shepherd I would do my part But poor as I am I will give to him my heart And he shall reign Forevermore, forevermore And he shall reign forevermore 
forevermore, forevermore. Unto us a child is born, the King of kings and Lord of lords, and he shall reign forevermore, forevermore. Here within a manger lies the one who made the starry skies, this baby born for sacrifice, Christ the Messiah. Into our hopes, into our fears, the Savior of the world appears, the promise of eternal years. Christ the Messiah, and He shall reign forevermore, forevermore, and He shall reign forevermore, forevermore. He shall reign forevermore, forevermore, and He shall reign forevermore, forevermore. Unto us a child is born, the King of kings and Lord of lords, and He shall reign forevermore, Go in peace, friends, and love and serve the Lord. Merry Christmas to you. Join us for lunch, and uh, during Sunday school, we're having a meeting for our budget. Join us for that, too. Go ahead and have some refreshments. Lord is come, let earth receive. 